All right, we're going to spend the first few minutes today just learning how to plot the graph from yesterday's activity on Microsoft Excel. When you had the, the uh, data from yesterday emailed to yourself, it should look something like this. We've got a few different sets of data or a few different sets of, of information here. We've got time, position. It calculates velocity for us, although we don't really want that. Okay, We don't care about the velocity in yesterday's activity yet. We're going to find that from our position time graph. So we want to focus on the first two columns here, okay? Chase? We're going to focus on the first two columns. So here's how we do it. Once you open your CSV file in Microsoft Excel, it'll look something like this. You may very well have, and in fact, you probably will have many more data points than I have here. You'll have that because I just made up this data. This isn't real data. This is made up data. If you have real data, there's going to be a lot more. That's great. The more, the better. If you have a bunch of data at the end that was past the point where the object was being detected as it was moving, we talked about that with a number of groups yesterday, then just delete that data, and that's easy enough to do. So let's say this is where we're at, and we want to plot this graph now. What I want you to do since you're plotting a position time graph is highlight the y-axis of your graph. Okay, we want to plot position on the y-axis, so highlight that, please. Then I want you to go to the top tab and insert a scatter plot. Okay, we don't want area, we don't want a line graph, we don't want a pie graph. Okay, the temptation is to make it a line graph. We don't want that. What that's going to do is connect the dots, and we don't want any dots connected. The answer to the question in Physics 20, when do we connect the dots, is never. You never connect the dots on a graph in Physics 20 or in Physics 30. Never. So we're not going to plot a line graph. We're going to plot a scatter plot. And we're going to pick the first option right here, which is going to be Give me a great straight line graph right there. Now, in the end, this is the graph that I want to see. But I'm going to show you something that will help you for other graphs down the road. Okay, what I want you to do at this point is to click Select Data. Right now, the data that I want is on this graph, including the x-axis. But sometimes, depending upon how you're plotting your graph and which variables you're choosing, um, it'll have, it will have picked the wrong variable to put on the x-axis. So to get the right one, we're going to click Select Data. We're going to click Edit. You can see the y-axis already has some values in there. We're going to click this little button right here to select our x values. And then we're going to highlight our x column. Click this little button again, and it's there. We can put a title of the graph in here now. We'll call it Position Versus Time. Oops, something happened there. Position Versus Time. And we'll click OK. Click OK again. There's my graph. Now, we also want to label our axes. To label our axes, we're going to click this little button up here to give me an option to type something in for the x-axis and the y-axis. The y-axis here is position. So let's delete that, the axis title, and type in position. And put in the units. It's going to be in meters. We'll do the same thing for the x-axis here. But, of course, it's going to be time, and we're going to put in seconds. So far, so good? We don't have to get rid of this little thing, but I don't like it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Highlight it and, and delete it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see it better. And now what I want to do is plot a line of best fit. You guys know what a line of best fit is? We've done that in Science 10, right? A line of best fit is a line that goes through a lot of the points. It doesn't necessarily touch the points but it approximates the points. That line of best fit, we can plot by hand after we print this off, or we can have Microsoft Excel do it for us. To plot the line of best fit, we're going to select the data series there by clicking on it, right click, and then we're going to go down to click, or we're going to go down and click Add Trend Line. It's going to give us a bunch of options. We want to click Linear because that looks like it should be a straight line. So click Linear, and then you can click Close if you want, but if you want to go a step further to display the equation, which will give you the slope of this graph, delta y over delta x, right? We can click Display Equation on Chart. Close. There it is. Now, if you remember from math class, the equation for any straight line graph is y is equal to mx plus b. y is equal to mx plus b is this equation that you see right there. For whatever reason, I can't write on that. 
y equals mx plus b. Y-axis, right here. M, what do you see M as here? What's the value of M in this equation that was just displayed on the graph? No? Well, yes, it is. It means velocity, yes. But what's the value of it? Y equals 15x plus 2. Y equals mx plus b. What's the value of the slope? Which is the velocity? Fi 15. What's the y-intercept, b? 2. We're not going to worry so much about that y-intercept, although it does have significance. It means where the object started. So in other words, if you put the car down yesterday 2 meters in front of the motion sensor, then your y-intercept would be 2. Okay, That's not what we're trying to get at with this activity. We're trying to get the velocity of the car. So basically, the velocity of the car, if this was my data, would be 15, the slope of this graph. Does that make sense? That's essentially all you have to do. Now, how are we going to actually write this up as an activity? Well, I'll tell you what you need in this activity, first of all. You need data. Okay, to get the data, the easiest way to, to put the data into your uh, lab write-up is just to take it from your Microsoft Excel file here. Let's tidy it up a bit. Okay, let's highlight, uh, we don't want to highlight position and velocity. We want to highlight time and position. Okay, let's center it so it looks a little bit tidier. Let's bold. Let's bold time and position just to make it a little bit, look a little bit nicer. Okay, it's bolded there. Let's take our, uh, our data here for time. You can see that sometimes it expresses it to one decimal place, sometimes it's zero decimal places. Let's just be consistent here. Okay, we want to be consistent. So let's click on this little button up here. That's going to take it to one decimal place for all of my data. Same thing for position. Uh, let's highlight that. Okay, let's let's make it a little. Uh, let's let's put our grid lines in there so that we can distinguish between uh, all the different points there. Let's click on this and and put all borders in there. Okay, we got a nice looking data table there now. Let's highlight that. Let's right click it and let's copy it. Let's go into Microsoft Word. Type data. Right click. And paste. Or better yet, just go Control V, which will paste it. There it is. There's my data. Now my analysis, which is the next thing that you have to do in this activity, is essentially your graph. So let's go into Excel again. Let's click on the graph. Let's right click it, copy it again. Control V is paste, and there's my graph. Then you have to do a conclusion. The conclusion essentially answers the problem. The problem, if you remember yesterday, was what is the velocity of the toy car? So the conclusion would be the velocity of the toy car is, I'm not going to keep typing this, but the velocity of the toy car is, in this case, 15 meters per second. Then I want you to tell me how you know that. So my conclusion would be the velocity of the toy car is 15 meters per second. This is known because the slope of the graph is 15 meters per second. There's my conclusion. Done. That makes sense. Answer the question. Answer the problem. Okay. What's the velocity of the car? The velocity of the car is 15 meters per second. And then how do you know? I know because the slope of the graph was 15 meters per second. Finally, you need sources of error. And along with sources of error, you need ways to maybe improve that for next time. Some people call this evaluation as opposed to sources of error. I don't really care what you call it, but it has to be there. So two or three good things that, that made this activity not quite perfect that could be improved on for next time. So one thing, please don't use this. Okay, don't use this example. You can use it, but at least come up with a couple of other good ones yourself. One thing could be Yesterday, we had those pieces of cardboard attached to the cars, right, to make the cars bigger so the motion sensors could find them easier. Those card, some of those pieces of cardboard weren't attached great. Some of them moved a little bit. What could that do? Well, it's going to mess up our data, right? It's going to mess up our data, not by much, but it's going to mess up our data by a little bit if the cart itself is moving and it's not just the cart that's moving. So one of my sources of error could be that the card on the cart 
was not fixed sturdy enough so that it was moving around a little bit, which could have caused um, imprecise data collection. My solution to that would be, well, instead of using masking tape to attach it down, maybe we use duct tape to attach it down. Or maybe we use something else that's not going to move around. Does that make sense? Is that good? So this should be a pretty easy activity for you guys to write up. Because I've, I've basically written up the activity just now in the last five minutes. You need data, which comes from your Excel file, your CSV file that was emailed to you by your partner. You need the graph, which is going to be plotted from that data. You need to tidy up the data a little bit, copy it over to Microsoft Word, copy the graph over to Word, then write your conclusion and your sources of error, and then you're done. How are you going to get marked on this? Let's real quickly just show you the uh, rubric that we're using to mark you here, okay? Data and observations, basically. If everything is there and it's in the proper format and it's neat, you're going to get a three out of three for that. Okay, so the, the, the activity that I just partially wrote up, I would have got a three out of three for data there. The analysis, well, to get a five, you have to have your graphs all in proper format, show very accurately the data measured, relationships can be surmised from the charts and graphs and so on. Okay. If you plot a good graph showing everything, including your line of best fit, including labeling your axes, including the equation on the graph, you're going to get a 5 out of 5 for that. Okay. So already we're at an 8 out of 8 on this activity, really, really easily. And then it goes down to conclusion. It gives a valid conclusion that proves, that provides, sorry, a full explanation. So basically, if you answer the question, answer the problem, and then you justify it, how do you know? then you're going to get a 3 out of 3 on conclusion. So we're at an 11 out of 11. And final evaluation, that's essentially your sources of error. Evaluates materials, procedure, and results, including limitations, weaknesses, or errors, and states realistic suggestions to improve the investigations. That's what's required to get a 3 out of 3 on that. You tell me what could have been better and how to make it better. Do that two or three times for a couple of good uh, things that could have been better, and you're going to get a 3 out of 3 on that. Hey, let's, when we hand this in, let's everybody get a 14 out of 14 in this activity and start off well. Hey, you got it? Any questions? Easy enough? All right, we went through this fairly quickly in terms of how to plot the graphs. Okay, I did that fairly quickly because we can always go back and watch it. Okay, you can always go back tonight and watch that, that podcast when you're going to do it yourself. If I was you, if you're not comfortable with plotting graphs on Excel already, then I would have one window open on my computer, that would be YouTube, and I would be watching and pausing as I go. Every time I do a step on my actual graph, which is my other window that's open, I would pause the YouTube video, and then I would do that step, and then I would go and press play on the podcast again. And then I would go to another step, I'd, I'd press pause, I'd do it on my Excel graph, and so on and so on and so on. By the end of 10 minutes, you should be done. All right? 